Good evening. Welcome to Larry Rinker Golf Live. I'm Larry Rinker. I'm your host. I'm joined tonight by my sister, Lori Rinker. She was born in Stewart, Florida, won the 1980 U.S. Girls Junior, and was a two-time All-American at the University of Florida. She has two LPGA Tour wins and won the J.C. Penney Mixed Team Classic with yours truly. She has a win on the LPGA Japanese Tour and currently playing the Legends Tour of the LPGA where she has won four times and was a leading money winner in 2014. Please welcome Lori Rinker to Larry Rinker Golf Live on Facebook. How you doing, Lori? Thank you, Larry. Great. It's great to be on with you and thanks for that introduction. Sounds good. Yeah, well, you always, we always were kidded you had the best swing in the family. I know. I know. It looked the prettiest. That necessarily worked the best. So the Everybody's topic tonight is short game, and we're going to do some screen sharing here where we can go through some uh, slides here and, and just show some things. But really, I want to go through the art of this short game. And really, what is short game? It's shots within 30 yards, including bunker shots. To me, Lori, when I get outside of 30 yards, it goes into distance wedges. I, yeah, worked, on a, I worked on a 30 yard shot with my lob wedge where the shaft was parallel to the ground. My half shot, my left arm is parallel to the ground, but with the 30 yard shot, the shaft was, and that was a great shot. I don't really teach that. You could call it the 730 or quarter shot, but distance wedges really come out to me after uh, 30 yards. And when we're inside 30 yards, it seems like people miss distance more than they miss direction. Wouldn't you agree with that? They definitely uh, miss distance more. The direction's usually pretty good, but distance control is a big key. And consistent contact is how we develop feel. So if, if our contact is inconsistent, very hard to develop feel. That's why I always like new golfers to work a lot on putting because the contact is consistent and they're gonna be able to develop some feel at least with the club. And it's a club that doesn't have a lot loft in it and really a lot of time can be spent on the putting green and if your contact's inconsistent there's really no way somebody's going to develop feel and and be that consistent with with their short game so short games fundamentals i'm always saying laurie bounce equals loft and the more loft you have the more bounce you have so we lean that shaft forward we have less bounce, less loft. We lean the shaft backwards. We have more loft, more bounce. And a lot of people don't really understand bounce. What do you think about, Lori, when you're deciding on a shot, how much loft and bounce you're going to use? Well, it depends on if I need to hit it high and have it land soft, or if I want it to run a little bit more, I'll use less bounce. But Really, the bounce comes into play in the bunker. I always, always use it in the bunker. And then when I hit a high soft shot, I want to use a lot more bounce. So, you know, that's a big decision. It's kind of how much run you, you can have or how much height do you need. Yeah, and a lot comes down to conditions too. So if you have really soft sand or you're, the ball's sitting up in the rough, that's where you need a lot of bounce. Whereas if you have a lie in the bunker where it's washed out, we've seen a lot of that with all the rain we've had in Florida. So we get in a bunker, it doesn't have a lot of sand in it. We don't want to lay that face wide open and use a lot of bounce, do we? We want to have more of a square face sand wedge and not a lot of shaft lean so that we're, uh, we're hitting that shot with a little bounce, but not like when we're trying to hit the ball straight up in the air. So you, it's hard to, to hit the ball high if you got a tight lie, isn't it? So you, you really, tight lies is where 
we tend to uh, use a, a less bounce is when we have those tight lies. So really, I'm always telling my students today, Lori, especially the higher handicap player, that you have to have this low trajectory shot. You have to have a high trajectory shot. And if they can leave and they have some confidence in hitting a low shot and hitting a high shot, I've kind of done my job because everybody needs to be able to, to get a bunker shot out of the bunker and on the green. And if you have a bunker between you and the green, you need to have a shot that you can hit the ball over the bunker and put it on the green, don't you? Absolutely. And I think uh, a lot of people are more comfortable with that low bump and run, but there's a lot of situations where that just doesn't work. So they need to learn how to hit a high shot is uh, going to benefit them greatly. Well, with this system that I've come up with, you can see here on the left, the low shot, you can see the balls played pretty much in the middle of the stance with a square face and a square stance. And then on the right, the ball's kind of in the middle of the stance for a high trajectory shot. And I like to say that the main family, whether you're going low or high, we're going to play the ball in the middle. The only difference is the higher trajectory shot has an open stance and open club face. So we're setting up with less loft in the club face. Now, if somebody wants to hit the ball lower, they're going to play it more towards the right foot and lean the shaft more. And if they're going to hit the ball higher, they're going to play the ball more forward towards their left foot and have less shaft lean. So it's, it's important for people to understand that if you play the ball towards your back foot and lean that shaft more, right foot runner, left foot loft. Got that from one of my lady students. That's a great one there. That's a great way. That's for right, right handers. That's for right handers. It, it would you have to come up with something for your LNR if you were left-handed. But left, left foot, if you're left-handed, left foot is low and right foot is come up with something for R. But I really wanted to get into some video here and just look at what, you know, we see a lot when we're using video with short game. And it's, when, when I look at myself here hitting shots, I really believe this high shot is just as natural as you taking one club and just feeling like you're underhanding a ball. And I, know, things, I know well, when I was playing on the LPJ Tour, I practiced hours with my right hand only to get the feel. And that was the like, drop. Yeah, and so it's really that natural. And one of the things we look at is where do we where do we match that address shaft lean? And we're really matching it about one to three inches in front of where it was at address. We have our weight in our front foot, left foot for a right-hander. Don't want to get this left shoulder too high. That can lead to blades. That, that can be issues if you're doing that. But this is pretty good geometry for a high trajectory shot. But the releases are different depending on if you're hitting a high shot or a low shot because a low release is where we're going to release against our lead arm, against that left arm, and as it goes through, the club doesn't pass it much. Whereas the release for the high trajectory, that's where the club is going to be in a similar place at impact, but the release is different. Now the club passes the left arm. And this is natural and intuitive, just like hitting these shots with just your right arm in hand. And it's interesting how so many people are trying to not let the club release on these shots. So, so many people are doing it, and even some guys that are pretty good at it, you know, if we look at Phil Mickelson here, I mean, he, he's pretty good with short game. And here's Phil demonstrating a flop shot. He's with Roger Cleveland. They're talking about the Callaway wedges. 
And, and Phil is really demonstrating, hey, you don't want to do that. You don't want to let the club go by. He's talking about you really want to, and for him, he wants to keep his lead arm moving, his right arm moving, and not have the club pass it. But it's interesting, Lori, that when we go to the tape and we see him at impact, that at impact, the club is passing. That shaft is right here. And a couple more frames, and now the shaft's up here. So he absolutely released the club. Not, nothing like his practice swing or what he was saying he was going to do. He totally let the club head go there. He did. Now, you and I got to play with the best players on the LPGA and PGA Tour. And really, it comes down to a feel, trusting your feel, trusting what you're doing. Phil has the feel of his hinge and hold that he talks about, but in reality, it's not what he does. And I have to say, when I bought a camera eight and a half years ago, I saw what I really did, not what I thought I did. And it, it's just interesting how here's Phil doing this in this shot, even though he thinks that he's not. And a little later, he hits a, another shot this is the ball sitting down, but here now he's got a shorter shot with less club head speed. And as he, as he hits this, he actually is going to keep the club face open. And you can see it when it exits here. There's the club face. It's a little hazy, but he actually does what he thinks when he has a slow club head speed shot. And I got to watch him play covering the PGA Tour in 08 and 09 at the PGA Championship. And I think he tends to play shots out of the rough with a little too much shaft lean. And with that hinge and hold, he doesn't have the consistency of, of his short game out of the rough if he would have been releasing it more and letting the club head pass like he does. He still feel the thrill when he goes for those high helicopter yeah. shots. I mean, he's amazing. And he's, he's great on the low shot, too. I mean, we saw that in the match this past Sunday. So he hit some shots up gimme. He called he his shot when uh, JT asked him what he was going to do. He called it and put it up there, went his way. Yeah, but it's, it's interesting, Laurie, how I kind of came up with this about the short game and, and just – you know, wanting to get, you know, some, some miss out of the way here, but you control the distance with your pivot. I don't get that. You know, to me, the distance is actually controlled with the speed the club head's traveling and the loft you deliver to the club or to the ball, and also where you hit it in the face will affect it too. So I don't feel like, Lori, I'm controlling that speed in the club head with my pivot. How, as Toshki always says, how can something moving slower control something that's moving faster? The arms are moving faster and further than the body is rotating. So the arms are swinging and moving the chest, not the chest moving the arms. But you and I have a lot of lessons with people that are trying to control the distance with the pivot. You hinge and hold the angle. You turn through the ball and you keep the club face open. In my world, those are all missed because when the club face really goes through, it rotates. And there it is. There you can see the open face. Well, I started with it slightly open. If I'd have started with it square, it would have been pretty much straight up and down here. But it's is just, that something you learned after you saw yourself on video? Did you think you had it, your face more open than that? It is, and it reminds me of a lesson that I gave you where I was showing you this putt flop. The putt flop is where we basically are doing the same thing, but we get closer to the ball with our putting grip. And you can see the rods on the ground representing an open stance and open club face. And I'm just swinging on my toe line. I'm going pretty straight back and through here. You can watch this. But look at the toe, look at the toe release. And if you watch it here, 
you're going to see there's that impact, that good impact where the weight's in the front foot. I'm matching the address shaft lean in the correct place right here in that one to three inch window. But even though I felt like I was turning it under, what happened? What happens to my hands there, Lori? They released and they, you turned the club face over actually. Yep. So I believe that the orbit, the free orbit of this club head is going to rotate and that's actually rotating my hands. The other part of that is as the club head passes the lead arm or the left arm, the, the club face is going to rotate. It's almost as if that club is rotating my arms and hands. And that's why I had a feel of I was turning that under. But the truth is, as that club passed my hands, reality is I'm not, hold, I'm not keeping it open, am I? No, you're not. If you're you look at it really here going through, you, you can see that that toe of the club is trying to release as it goes through. So there it is. And now I'm clipping that ball and I'm using that bounce of the club and you know, it's, it's really good. And a lot of people just want to understand how to use that bounce. I'll say another thing that I've been saying a lot of my lessons lately too, when it comes to using a sand wedge, using the bounce, hitting a high trajectory shot is we have to know where the bottom of that arc is, don't we? And Absolutely. I really believe, I really believe the best with a wedge in their hand, they know how to clip that grass and brush the grass. And I'll take people over on the putting green and I'll have them make a few swings and just brush the green. And then now can you just swing and brush the green with a nice light grip and boom, they can start picking it off the ground. But I just think so many people are struggling here with this high trajectory shot, Lori because they're trying to do it all with their big engine, you know, their chest and their core versus, hey, can I just swing this club? Can I just throw it like I'm throwing a ball? Can, can I just be like I'm hitting it one-handed? I know? think um, we need to explain how you engage the bounce. Because okay. when you're using the bounce, you have you have a lot more room for error than you do when the leading edge is coming in. So as you can see where Larry's setting up here, the butt of the club is pointing just below the zipper and the blade is open. You have to have a you have to have an open blade to engage the bounce. If the blade's square, you're coming in with your leading edge. So I know a lot of people get freaked out about having an open blade but, but use it correctly it actually becomes your friend it does and tiger who played this past weekend you know if we look at tiger here at impact this was at the hero championship about five years ago but watch what he does going through here see there's the sharp leading edge catching and now look at his hands going left and he's holding the face off. So you can see going through here what he's trying to do. And that's the worst that can happen is when you do that. But he just set up with so much shaft lean there and trying to hold on. I mean, here's Tiger Woods. He and Jack Nicklaus, two best players ever to play this game. And here's Tiger, watch this technique not trying to use a lot of wrist in his backswing. He never set, he's never setting his right hand to throw. And then he's trying to turn with his body and go left. And there it is. He just chunked two shots. The greatest player of all time, 82 wins. And with that type of a technique, even he can't make it happen. What about he's the rest of us mortals? More, uh, yeah, I don't think uh, we can be consistent with that either. And obviously, he's changed his technique since then. That was the thing he was doing then because he's back to pitching and chipping the ball superbly. Yeah, he is. And what did he change? What he changed was is now all of a sudden he is letting the club, he's throwing the club, he's feeling this. 
It's just a motion of a throw. Think of a shortstop catching a ground ball. He's going to underhand it to the second baseman. So he's just letting his right hand toss. You know, he putts with his right arm and hand. So you we see him all the time on the putting green, one-handing it right-handed. Uh, I, I always said, if I saw Tiger, I, I said, Tiger, I have one question for you. Competition, who wins? Your left arm and hand against your right arm and hand pitching the ball. Which one's going to win? And you know he's going to say, my right arm and hand. And I, my next thing is I'm going to say is, then why is it tied behind your back? Because the way he was pulling through it and trying to hit those shots, he's not using his right hand here at all. And when you see him here at impact, and look at this, see, he has not, he's not thrown it with the right hand as he goes not at through. All. See that? Not at all. Look at it. It's almost increasing as he stuck the chap or the sharp leading edge into the ground. But look at that right hand there. He's not throwing. He's not letting it go. And he's gotten so much better and closer to what he was. I got to play with him at the 98 Players Championship. And his short game was phenomenal. And if I saw him, I'd say, hey, I'd, I'd just like to see you get back to what you used to do. And I think he is. I think he's a lot closer to what he used to do. And the bottom line here, Laura, you were talking about it. He wasn't using any bounce here, was he? Not at all. And that, uh, that Bermuda at the Hero Challenge, that Bermuda is not very forgiving when it comes to the leading edge. No, and that's the thing. You get on an upslope, you know, you get that lie on an upslope. Now that makes you even steeper. So now you got that grain, that grain growing right down the hill on you, and you've got to loft up, or you've got to use less loft and play the ball more forward. And that's why it's so important if you want to use bounce, as you were talking about, one of the things if you want to use bounce is we have to play the ball more toward our, our front foot and have less shaft lean at address. That club's about 90 degrees straight up and down now if i if i throw the club i can use the bounce of the club you know and if we look at me here at impact you wouldn't you wouldn't know what my release is going to be if you just see that but Looks there's like the that. high release there's the high release letting it go and and the truth is if i was hitting it one-handed with my left hand what does it do well it's in a good impact position but the club passes, the left wrist goes into extension or cups, and the left elbow folds and the club goes up. So if you want to be a little adventurous, work on this with your lead arm in hand and get that throwing motion. Look at me move that club head with the lead arm in hand. All I'm doing is the same thing I would be doing if I was throwing this with my right arm in hand. So it's amazing, Laurie, we can give all these commands, we can tell people all these different things that they need to do to, to hit a, a high trajectory shot. And yet, how about if you don't think at all and you just hit it one-handed? <laughs> and all, I, uh, all I of do, a sudden they can hit it. Yeah. But high trajectory shots, we got to use that bounce. We've got to have our weight in our front foot. That that's our good steep. That's what makes us steep. And it's the the shallowing effect is this throwing motion with the trail arm. That's our shallow. And if we have a steep and a shallow and we're neutral, now we're going to have the club hitting the ground in the proper place and we're going to be using the bounce. And then the only other thing is, is we just want to make sure the club head is on plane. So if the club head is on plane or even a little above the plane, there's the club head on plane going through. And now you can start using the bounce of the club with uh, these shots. So, uh, and really, Lori, all this is the same if we go in the bunker. So if you look at me here in the bunker, 
I'm always saying a long blast bunker shot is an open stance, open club face, on playing golf swing. And look at this short game 101. Weight in your front foot at impact. So where is my weight? My weight's in my left foot. You cannot hit down unless your weight's in your front foot. Hit down and release. So if you're struggling with your bunker game, get that weight in your front foot, hit down and release the club. And the on plane swing, Lori, is, is a big part of it too. And if we look at you, Lori, hitting bunker shots, we're going to see that when you hit a bunker shot, same thing happens for you. So here you are hitting a long blast bunker shot and notice what your arms and hands do. So that doesn't look like you're pulling, turning, and holding the face open to me, Lori. No, not at all. I'm letting that club head release. Yeah, so you're pass, letting it pass my hands. You're letting that release pass your hands. And if we look at you down the line and we watch this down the line, there's your club head on plane and there, look at your club face. You can see your club face is rotating right here. So you can definitely see what that club face is doing going through impact. So a lot of people are trying to do all kinds of things. They're trying to swing out to in and everything else. They're trying to take it outside and swing left. And I really like when we hit these shots, because the bunkers are the same as in the grass, that we want to be stacked. We want our toes, knees, hips, and shoulders all going the same direction. And then just make your golf swing. Make, make the good golf swing. I get lessons a lot of times where people want a bunker lesson, Laurie, and most of the time it's a golf swing issue while they're struggling. Right. They're probably doing the sit. Most time they're doing the same thing in their short game as they're doing in their full swing. Yeah. And we see. So. Now, were you aware that you released the club this much? Um, I thought I kept the face open and just like what you think you're trying to do is keeping the face open. But I didn't realize how much I released. The face is open right at impact, but then you really, I'm releasing all, that's how much I've released it. Right. Well, Laurie, it's been great having you on the show tonight. This Larry, is really our second of edition game. of Larry Rinker Golf Live. You were on with Doc Wright a few weeks ago. We're going to be on Thursday night, 7.30 to 8. My guest next week is going to be Scott Monroe. I've got some great guests coming up. And, Lori, great having you on the show and love watching your short game. And, and we really hope at the end of the day that uh, all these things help you with your golf game. Thank you, Larry. Thanks for coming on, Lori. We'll see you next week. Keep swinging.